This is the aerial view of the school in 1936. The Wilson building standing proudly on the north side of the school, but very little else. The swimming pool can be seen, built in 1930, but still an open air pool, unheated. In 1931 the Thompson building was put up and this is still the centrepiece of the school. For many years Big School was housed in the Thompson building and there it is in all its glory with the stage and all the honours boards in the background there. It was the final assembly held there in 2002 when it was converted into the library. The famous old balconies in Big School will be recognised by Old Sills for many years just after the Second World War, at the beginning of term, the head boy used to get up and say, fees for the bursa, and they used to sling them down from the balcony, money in packets. Inside Big School, which is now the Sixth Form Common Room. Before that, it was a dining hall from 1931 to 1969 when K-Block was built. In 1957, a ceiling was put in and the upper story became dormitories. Then, in 1982, a sixth form library until the New Kent Library was built in 2002. One of the school's most spectacular buildings is now the chapel, commissioned and built in 1960 to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the school's foundation. It was dedicated as the Chapel of St Catherine and St Mary on the 26th of June 1960 and stands on a paved terrace and commands its site in the southeast corner of the grounds. Purpose-built, it provided the venue for many aspects of school life until the opening of the Bushell Hall and the Music School. The cultural centre of the school may have shifted, but the chapel, still a movingly impressive building in 2010, will continue to play a significant part in the unfolding story of Solihull School. This aerial photograph taken in 1972 shows the completed chapel and also the quad, now with all sides completed. The sports hall has also been constructed but the schoolhouse is still recognisable. Only the George Hill building now has to fit into that jigsaw. The extensive teaching block that dominates the west side of the school was opened in 2005 and named after George Hill, OBE, JP, a long time governor who served from 1966 to 1982. A well known Solihull figure, George was a councillor for 37 years. His greatest contribution was masterminding of a reorganisation of the finances of the 1960s which ensured a healthy and secure financial future for the school and made possible all the developments that have taken place ever since. The craft block, known as the fort, was made into a first class design and technology centre in 1987. Looking back down the avenue with the science department on the right, which is now the biology section, which was developed in the 1960s, 70s and 80s and the modern change rooms to the new gym which were built, was built in 1924, and just peeping out there is the Wilson building. In front of the Thompson building is the Master's Lawn, which was created in 1953, replacing wooden classrooms which were removed. Also, the west wing of the Great Quadrangle was built, at the end of which was the new, and now, the old gym. The opposite, or east side, which is known as Sea Corridor, was added in 1936, at first the corridors were open to the elements, cloister-like, but thankfully they were glazed in 1966. Further additions in the northeast corner of the quad where the junior school is located were made in 1965. The modern junior school emerged in 1991 after substantial extension and refurbishment. Its new frontage now faces the Bushell Hall and the new music school in a skillfully designed recreation area. The final piece of the quad was completed in 1953 with the construction of the Memorial Building. The Memorial Building comprised three classrooms and a newly commissioned War Memorial. The final alteration to the quad was made in 2002 when part of the Memorial Building, which was known as D5, was demolished to create an avenue leading to the new Bushell Hall. The War Memorial now stands alone and records the names of old Sills who fell serving their country in two world wars and the Korean War. In 2002, the foundation stone was laid on perhaps the most ambitious project undertaken at Solihull School since the Thompson Building in 1931. Eighteen months later, the Bushell Hall was opened and provided the school with a superb theatre which would last do justice to all the musical and dramatic productions that had delighted audiences since the 1970s. It also provided facilities for the school to be able to assemble as one unit over 1,000 staff and pupils. The process was completed as Big School was turned into the new library which houses over 16,000 books and two 25-bay computer rooms. 
the famous old balconies, which many old sills will recognise, which backed onto the master's common room, now provides areas on the first floor of the library for computers. It provides study facilities for over 100 pupils and replaced the 1960s Kent Library, opened by the Duchess over 40 years before. In this shady area of the school, we can see the back of Bradford House, which faces onto the Warwick Road, and we see its extension, which was the first ever music school. The oldest building on the site, Bradford House, built in 1799, has been used for many things over the years. It was an air raid warden's centre in the Second World War. Its entrance can still be seen from Warwick Road, and it is now the bursary. And there it combines the new music school with Bradford House and the entrance to the bursary, until the building in 2009 of the modern new music school, which was named after David Turnbull, who was director of music from 1957 to 1991. This is the building site in 1969 for the K-Block. The first floor of K-Block provided geography rooms and the ground floor of the brand new refectory was situated and it is still serving school lunches today. Later, in 1985, modern languages classrooms were opened and K-Block gets its brand new top floor which can be seen there at its opening. Going back into the quad to the arches there, we have the quad in its present form. The headmaster's wing was renovated in 1988 to provide a proper reception area which is the entrance now to the school for visitors. From the Victorian splendour of schoolhouse to the functional opulence of Bushell Hall and the George Hill teaching block, Solihull School has kept pace with the constant demands of improvement in terms of facilities. But bricks and mortar are only part of the story. Buildings are the shells that have accommodated the thousands of pupils that have passed through them since 1560. It is people that create and people that achieve success and ensure survival. It is people in their life and times that history is really about and the buildings of Solihull School represent that history.